Welcome to the mind of Lance Skurve, the most creatively profound man in cyberspace. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Lance Skurve. I am sorry for postponing the show and putting it for tomorrow and then bringing it back again. I had something to do that was really pressing, and I thought that I might not make it tonight, but I did, so I brought it back. I really want to speak about this. We've spoken about this topic many times before from different perspectives, but this is just going to be an overall uh, non-specific type situation. And look at the banner behind me or the individuals behind me. Those are supposed to be men. All right. So you might look at those and say, oh, those are women. They're not women. They're drag queens. And I'm not blaming anybody for what they do. I'm not saying it's part of the conspiracy and they are part of it because many times in the past when I've spoken about black manhood and I would point out how we're emasculated and reduced, these people have taken offense to me and they had nothing to do with them. You do what you want to do. It's your life, your choice. But when I'm speaking on something, I go in with surgical precision and that's something that I always do. But some people can't handle me speaking, and they want to say that, oh, you're hating, you're venomous, you might be undercover. No, 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 I'm not speaking with any venom. You know, these days, it really seems as though black manhood, straight black masculinity, in its rawest form, as it has been for so many (laughs) countless years until recently, It's like, now that's the crime, toxic black masculinity. How can you be masculine and toxic? It's only toxic people that would say something that is natural is toxic. You see, when you have a poisoned mind, a poisoned body, and a poisoned spirit, when you're an alcoholic to the nth degree and you get off the alcohol, you feel sick. You're moving into a state of wellness, but you feel sick. So you think the wellness is the thing that's imbalanced, that's the thing that's sick. Many people have been traumatized, and I feel sorry for those people who have been traumatized, and they've been traumatized sexually. And it gives them a propensity that when other things are introduced to them, they go with it. I understand that. I've never experienced it. I've never experienced it in any other way than a heterosexual way, even though I was touched by a 15, not 15, uh, what was I going to say? Fifteen. <laughs> Five, I was going to say, by an older cousin. I don't know where the 10 extra years came from. By an older cousin in her 30s. You know, I was made to perform acts on her. So as I got older, when my sexuality started to bud and explode, well, there's certain things that we go back to in our mind that are so easy because it was introduced to us early. So either you shut down or you become promiscuous in those ways. It's just the way the human psyche is. That being said, that's a whole other topic. I just wanted to speak about the title. Hasn't anyone even noticed that black manhood is under attack? In recent years, there's been a growing discourse surrounding the portrayal of black men in the media, particularly concerning the pervasive stereotype of effeminization. This stereotype perpetuates harmful narratives that undermine the diversity and complexity of black masculinity. Through various mediums, from film and television to advertising and music videos, black men are often depicted in ways that reinforce narrow and limiting stereotypes, contributing to the marginalization and erasure of their identities. Tonight we delve into the roots of this phenomenon, its implications, and the importance of challenging and dismantling these harmful representations. Hmm. These are nothing but facts, y'all. Nothing but facts. The historical content, context. The betrayal of black masculinity in the media has a long and complex history deeply rooted in the legacy of slavery, colonialism, and systemic racism. From the caricatures of Sambo and Uncle Tom to the hyper-sexualized and violent portrayals in blaxploitation films, black men have been subjected to a range of dehumanizing stereotypes that can 
continue to shape perceptions today. Effeminization, as a subset of these stereotypes, has its roots in the racist ideologies of white supremacy, which sought to emasculate and degrade black men as a means of maintaining power and control. Media representation. In contemporary media, the effeminization of black men is often perpetuated through various types and archetypes. These include the betrayal of black men as sassy sidekicks, flamboyant fashionistas, or emasculated figures devoid of agency and authority. In film and television, characters like the gay best friend or the black best friend serve as tokenistic representations that reinforce stereotypes rather than challenge them. Similarly, in music videos and advertising, black men are often portrayed as hypersexualized objects of desire or as passive consumers rather than creators. Impact on Identity the constant reinforcement of these stereotypes in the media can have profound effects on the self-esteem, mental health, and well-being of black men. It can lead to feelings of inadequacy, shame, and alienation as they struggle to reconcile their authentic selves with the limited and distorted images they see reflected back at them. Moreover, it perpetuates harmful ideas about masculinity and femininity, reinforcing rigid gender norms that stifle individual expression and diversity. Challenging stereotypes. Despite these challenges, there have been a growing movement to challenge and subvert these harmful stereotypes. Black creators, activists, and scholars are actively working to create alternative narratives that celebrate the richness and diversity of black masculinity. From films like Moonlight and Black Panther to musicians like Frank Ocean and Tyler, the creator, there is a growing visibility of black men who defy traditional gender norms and embrace their authentic selves. Conclusion. The effeminization of black men in the media is a complex and multifaceted issue rooted in centuries of systemic oppression and racism. By interrogating and deconstructing these harmful representations, we can create space for more nuanced and authentic portrayals of black masculinity. It is imperative that we continue to amplify diverse voices and challenge the status quo, ensuring that black men are seen and celebrated in all their complexity and humanity. Only then can we move toward a media landscape that truly reflects the richness and diversity of the black experience. But let me tell you something, y'all. That's just with our identities. We still have to fight certain things. See, we still have things on us. Sharina, how are you, my dear sister? Cosmic Energy. And I know earlier when I had put the show out first, I'm going to acknowledge your names. Karima, Willie C. Holman Jr., Yvonne. They came in earlier because I had scheduled the show earlier, and then I turned around and placed it for tomorrow because I, I had something to do that was very pressing, time sensitive. And I said, oh, man, I'm not going to have enough time to do this if I go out and get you know, caught up in, in, in the traffic and who, who knows what. I would hate to schedule a show and maybe a mishap happen when I'm out and I can't do it. So I said, okay, I'll do it. And I brought it back today. Just want to speak on a few things we have to go through on top of this foolishness of our emasculate, being emasculated. See, mass incarceration. The disproportionately high incarceration rates of black men perpetuate a cycle of fatherlessness and economic disadvantage in black communities. War on drugs. Policies like mandatory minimum sentences have targeted black men, leading to harsher punishments compared to their white counterparts for similar offenses. That's a fact. That's a fact. Yes, yes, we're doing well, sweetheart. Thank you so much. And gratitude to you, Cosmic Energy. Police brutality. Black men are disproportionately victims of police violence, often resulting in injury or death, further eroding trust in law enforcement. Four, racial profiling. 
frequently. Men are frequently targeted by law enforcement based on stereotypes, leading to unjust harassment and suspicion. Five, lack of economic opportunities. Structural barriers limit economic mobility for black men, including discrimination in hiring and access to capital. Six, educational disparities. Black boys face disparities in education, including disproportionate disciplinary actions and lower graduation rates, limiting their future prospects. Seven, health care disparities. Black men experience higher rates of chronic illness and lower life expectancy due to systemic barriers to health care access and quality. Eight, media representation. Negative stereotypes in media perpetuate harmful narratives about black masculinity, influencing public perception and self-esteem. Nine, environmental racism. Communities of color, including many where black men reside, are disproportionately affected by pollution and environmental hazards, impacting health and well-being. Ten, gentrification. Economic forces often displace black communities, disrupting social networks and cultural cohesion, particularly detrimental to black men's sense of belonging. 11. Voter suppression. Policies targeting minority voting rights disproportionately affect black men, limiting their political representation and influence. 12. Lack of mental health support. Stigma and limited access to mental health resources contribute to untreated mental illness among black men, exacerbating social and emotional challenges. 13. Systemic racism in the justice system, biases in sentencing, sentencing, jury selection, and legal representation contribute to unfair treatment of black men within the criminal justice system. 14. Fatherhood Stereotypes. Black fathers are often portrayed as absent or irresponsible in media and popular culture, perpetuating harmful stereotypes and undermining positive role models. 15. Weaponization of black masculinity. Black men are often scapegoated for societal problems, leading to exaggerated fears and justifications for discriminatory policies and practices, and those were just a few. And on top of that, our manhood is under attack. Our manhood is under attack. Sister Beverly Scott, welcome on in. I want you to call me after the show because I've been trying to get in contact with you. I don't know what's wrong on my phone. We got people are going crazy over the show that we did, and we got to come back with something else. Yes. Now, is this something to complain about? Am I complaining? Am I blaming this or blaming that? No, we, we, we're not blaming. We're speaking facts. We're speaking facts. Anything I just said, go ahead and, and fact check it, right? And since we're at it, let me go and go into my other screen here. I want to look at something here and, and, and bring your attention to it. I spoke about it before. Since we say that black manhood is under attack, we know that. Um, I'm not going to read this off verbatim because this is very much a scientific type reading. I'm just going to speak about it. I spoke about it before. Atrazine, right? Uh, atrazine. It's been proven to turn male frogs into female frogs that have eggs. And I don't understand why we don't see more of this in the media. And I don't understand why we think that it won't have some kind of effect on us. And it affects our sisters too. And actually it affects everybody. But us, I couldn't believe it when I read this many years ago. And it was discovered by a black professor, I believe in Los Angeles. I'm, I'm not even here giving the facts all the way. It can be Googled. I'm not being lazy. I just want to touch on this real quick. Atrazine. A-T-R-A-Z-I-N-E. And you check it out for yourself. But I just want to touch on it really quick. From what I'm hearing, they use this uh, pesticide, herbicide, mostly in California, Texas, and Florida. And there are other places they use it too. But I heard about this, 
and it came to my surprise that every 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 herbicide that I saw, fertilizer that I saw here in Ghana, packaged in the market, common, had atrazine. And this week I'll be going down through that area. And then this week I want to take some photos and take some video of these products that have atrazine in strong numbers. Now, from what I'm also hearing and what I heard, you can't put as much. I mean, things are regulated in the United States, but it's still there. Out here, <laughs> there's not much regulation. If you can pay somebody to get away with something, you know, they'll look the other way. The government, um, these agencies, that is the norm here. So is it a wonder when you see these herbicides here and these pesticides and fertilizers, atrazine, atrazine, usually like up near the first ingredient? Because, you know, in packaging, the first ingredient is what they have the most of. It doesn't mean it may be more than 50%. It might be 35%, 30%. But the next ingredient is going to be less. Sometimes it might be more than 50%. Sometimes it can be 97%. But what I'm saying is that Kamala Harris's visit over here to speak to the president to get him to kind of lead, lean toward the LGBT thing. Why is this so important to America? And why is there so much atrazine here? And with the things in the media, who I happen to know somebody high up in the media, in the entertainment industry, high up, y'all. And she tells me how things are run and how recently in Nigeria, they had a meeting out there with those high-placed members, and I say Hollywood in general. I don't know exactly what produces and stuff. I'm talking to you just like I'm talking to you in the doctor's office waiting room or the bus stop. But all this stuff is confirmed. And coming from, coming from the horse's mouth, y'all, that they said that you had to have an LGBTQ character in your movie. We're not talking about no second-rate role. It may not be the star, but it's a major player, and it must be a man. It must be a gay male man in your movies if you want to get this next Netflix deal and exposure in Hollywood, which is going to bring you a whole lot of money. Why can't they just leave them alone? And why can't people who are act, actors and actresses over there not salivate at just getting more money? They're getting good money, but they, they're not getting Hollywood money. So even them, they have a price, right? I don't understand it. Even Even... The music that's compromised. I mean, what if we as artists said, I, I say we, I'm not a music uh, singer or rapper or anything, but why don't we say no? Let, let's keep the culture wholesome and, in, and intact. We'll make our own smaller platforms. We can't compete with this uh, music industry money, but we'll get the support of the people. And if we get a whole lot less, right? But fail, because from what I'm hearing, even those artists who are getting these big deals after a while, they realize they don't have the rights to their music and, and there's certain restrictions put on them and they're walking around regular after having multi-million dollar hits. Black manhood. We, we, we can't let it flourish. We can't, I'm not saying me or you, but there's different factions out here that, that that's the unwritten rule. That it must be snubbed. It must be stopped. Why is it, why is it this way? What is it that these people know about us, why they have to attack us like this? And why are we overlooking these things? Why are we over, it's like Chinese water torture. You know, insignificant drop of water in the head in the same spot. Doesn't feel like much, but after a while it drives a person crazy. You see what I mean? It, it drives a person crazy. So these little seemingly innocent things, that they put into place. Unbelievable. That, that, that it's not too much of it here. And not too much, but overall, it's a whole lot. They get you used to it. Years ago, RuPaul. Come on, let's work. Work it, girl. Do your thing on the runway. Remember that song? That was like in the early 90s. Even we had Flip Wilson. Coming out like Geraldine. And they had the nerve, I think it was the National Enquirer, the National Star, 
They're still around. But back in the 70s, they were in hot competition with each other. They compared the legs of Geraldine, actually Flip Wilson, in stockings to other real women and said that he had better shapelier legs than the real women. They were with this buggerism from back then. I don't know who might remember that. That was a long time ago. That was in the mid-70s. But I was a young teenager, and I remember that article. I don't know if it, Beverly Scott, yes, you're, do you remember that? Tell me you remember that, because me and you are in the same age group. Yes, you said, yes, I know you remember that. And they compared the legs to Flip Wilson. What was that all about? See, there's a fear of us. It, it, it's, a, it's a spiritual thing also. But we're not supposed to talk about this stuff. Because if we talk about this stuff, we're being racist. There are differences with us. And this is not about snubbing the sisters. See, because when a real, wholesome, complete black man merges and melds and blends with a wholesome, complete, untouched, and what I mean untouched, untouched by the Western mindset, when these two come together, and yes, when they come together, C-O-M-E and C-U-M, both ways, it's a beautiful thing, and it's a powerful interaction. And as long as we're in existence, as long as we hold our families together, as long as we have strong families with no trauma, yes, we know trauma in our families most of the time, but if we would get away from the thinking of these people, we would be better off. If we go back to the old way of things, we'd be better off. There's something about us that they don't want to have react. We set off an energy. Now, I'm going to get wacko on you now. now I, I'm, I'm always going to speak my mind. Either you'll think I'm a nut now and you'll thank me later or applaud me later. I'm not looking for any applause anyway. I'm just speaking my mind because you know you're going to get it raw from me and I'm not going to hold back. I don't care who thinks I'm crazy. The aliens, and I'm going to say it again, that, that we're looking up in the sky for. And they have these crafts, and they say the government said they had contact with the aliens. And we have all these movies now from years ago about the aliens. Right? Just like in Malcolm X, before Malcolm X was assassinated, you had one guy yell about getting your hands out my pockets, and everybody turned their head. That was to distract the people from the guns that were going to be pointed on Malcolm that eventually assassinated him. Distraction. Distraction. So, I'm not saying the crafts in the sky aren't real. I do believe it's a demonic thing. Working in tandem with the aliens that we go to work with every day. That we ride the public transportation with every day. Who have do the evil things that they do to us and they don't treat us with any compassion. How can you expect compassion from something that has none? How can you expect empathy from something that has no, no empathy? We, time and time again, as the most forgiving people on the face of the earth, we keep forgiving and we keep forgiving. And all they got to do is give us that puppy dog smile. And we go, oh, they'll, they'll do better next time. Separate yourself and build yourself up. Stop messing around with the things that they're putting out there to poison the minds of our children. But, 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 but that master cylinder of a presence of the black man changes everything. They want him reduced. And they suggest to you on social media and these filthy TV shows that he's less than a man. That you need to go on and go on with somebody else that don't look like you. And many of you will feel justified in doing just that. They have us in a reduced state, so how can we function right? You can have the most expensive Lamborghini in your driveway and one little $10 part. If it has a $10 part, it might be 100 That's not under the hood. It won't run. So after a while, you begin to look at that beautiful, powerful vehicle as a piece of junk because something has been removed and it's replaced to keep it not functioning. So when that next man comes around and says, oh, pretty car you got there. Ah, it's a piece of junk. Why? Why do you call it a piece of junk? It's not running. It's been sitting there for three years. Well, how much uh, you want me to give you to take it off, off your hands? Ah, just give me $10,000, uh, whatever. 
just get it out of my yard. Now they're laughing at you because they got a they got a good deal at a bargain basement price. See? So that's what we're going for. See, that's why they want to see us reduced. Because they know that we're the shiznick. You know, it started back in gym class. I mean, I'm just saying this, right? There's always that bigger, stronger black man, young black man, whether it's elementary school, junior high, or even high school. In, in elementary, no, 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 it was, it was junior high school, which m- many people call middle school. And I was in the eighth grade. It was the seventh and eighth grade, but they had a special program for those who were a little bit ahead, right? Not special, you know, um, you know I don't want to say the word retarded, <laughs> but it was something for the children who were exceptionally gifted, and I was in that, right? As long as I wasn't talking this way, they were cool with me. But in the gym class, we had a gym teacher called, his name was Mr. Heck. What was it? H E C. H.T.? I know it was a Jewish man, though. It was short for something else. But he always used to call me Super Scurve. And I always wondered why. We had some good guys in the class now. I wasn't a basketball player. I wasn't, but when it came time to climbing the rope or, or putting the, 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 the round pegs in, in, in the round holes and climbing, putting yourself up, push-ups, wrestling, oh, I used to knock people down, all of that stuff, it was like, this guy, he's so smart, but he's so strong, right? And I got the record for sit-ups that particular year. I did, and it's there. Junior high school, 226. On Rockaway Boulevard, about two or three blocks from Lefferts Boulevard, Virgil I. Grissom High School, the record still got to be there. I did 1,630 sit-ups. There's a story behind that because I wanted to do more, but the guy miscounted. But I still got the record for that year. The year before, I did five, and I was pissed that I w- that's, that's all I could do, so I practiced. That's my mindset. That's how I am all the time. But they found it to be, like, incredible. And I stopped willingly because I thought I was 100 more. Long story. Anyway, when you're that adorable, non-threatening, handsome young boy, they love you. Not really. But it's almost like a person holding a baby alligator, right? Oh, let me hold the alligator. He's so small. Look at him. He's so cute. He's so handsome. But as soon as you get to size... And you're a threat. They're clutching their purses and crossing the street when they see you. They're locking their car doors when they see you. What is it that you're afraid of? Why do you lie on us in your media? Why do you make us seem like if you're not trying to effeminize us, you're trying to make it seem a criminal and a thug? Why is that? And then you set your laws with, with, with the bar so low. That anything we do, we're going to get a maximum sentence and you show our faces in the news and your documentaries and how we're disproportionately uh, uh, locked up. Of course we are, but you make it seem like it's our fault when we can't get a job and don't have the skills to make a job for ourselves. Everywhere that you turn, and I'm not making excuses because there's some who have succumbed to the negativity and didn't show resiliency. I have shown resiliency. I did not get caught up in all kind of things. I had the same things put in front of my face that anybody else had. Except I had a good home and good parents and they gave me a good upbringing. You understand? But I could have been making lots of money doing certain things. I had a call from a brother that I haven't spoken to in years and he's still in the drug game. Lance, man, I really respect what you're doing, man. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to send you something, man. I said, what you mean? I'm going to send you something. I'm going to send you something, man. This is going to be life-changing, man. <laughs> I'm like, and when he told me the amount, I said, brother, you know, I love you, but yeah, I can't do that. Man, come on, man, man. Your mother used to let us in, and we were locked out. She used to feed us and even teach us. And you were there, man. You always showed us love. You never turned your back on us. Even when we were out there swinging, we're doing it on a higher level now. I got to show you some love. I said, no, show me the love by saying it. But I can't get the energy transfer from what it is that you're doing and the energy coming from it. You've got to understand I'm not rejecting you. And believe me, I need the money. But I, I can't take it. I can't. Would my mother agree to that? No. 
do something for somebody else in a, in a different way, but I can't take it. Yeah, you know, hung up. Oh man, <laughs> you know what I mean. But no, I can't do that. And a lot of us don't have the resiliency because we didn't have any example. That's why it's important to the enemy to break down the black family. Once you break down the family, we 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 it's open season on us. Even more so, it's easier to insert something else. In our mind, like a hybrid, you see, a hybrid is a mixture of two different things. So we see strong black men out here, but they want to put on dresses. We see strong black men out here, but they talk about sucking penises. I had that article yet about Tank, the R&B singer, and, and uh, what, what surprised me more about that uh, article. And you say, "Well, what article? What is he talking about?" Well, Tank said that I mean, I'm not going to quote it verbatim. It isn't gay. It, it it doesn't necessarily mean that a man is gay if he sucked a penis, right? So I found out that that story came out five years ago. So why is it circulating now? Now, I know the way the Internet is that sometimes it's like things will wash ashore, meaning that in the ocean something might die and be out there for years and come up on the shore. And I know sometimes stories get hot again, and they seem to be trending, but it could be something that happened years ago. Like I have several articles that I wrote, and I have several shows that I've done in the past that when I check my analytics, I'm like, whoa, whoa that story got 15,000 hits in the last month? And then you check deeper to see where it is, and maybe somebody posted it in a very popular message board. Somehow, some way, it's just a resurgence. But why now is that whole thing coming back? They keep bringing it in our face. You know, it's almost like an offering in a restaurant on a menu. You keep seeing this thing on the menu, and you walk in the door, and you see these cardboard cutouts of, of this particular sandwich, and after a while, you're supposed to get curious and say, I want to try that out. But when you have images like this behind me or behind my, uh, uh, I didn't want to put my face on this. I was like, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> when, I, when I put it there, I was like, should I take it off? Just leave it like it is? I said, no, no, no. People know my, my, uh, my persuasion. <laughs> but you keep seeing these things as a child because to me, the attack is more on the children because when you just, Gentrify a neighborhood. I always say this before. I'm not going to bore you with it again, but they plan 20 years in advance, 25 years in advance, 30 years in advance. The decision is made. It's made. And just like I say it again, again, you see those cops in the black neighborhood and the poor black neighborhood playing with the little kids and the old grandmas. Oh, things are coming around. You see the white cops? They are so bad. But let your son or your daughter, well, mainly the sons, get a little older and they start to get harassed because... That is the silent word, that black manhood in its most powerful, raw form. I don't even have to say powerful. Black manhood is power. And I don't care who else don't like it. Because we're attacked more, ostracized more. Come, I mean, ugh. so many brothers that I know you all who are in the chat room and listening right now know so many brothers who have been destroyed by the system. They might have made a mistake. A misjudgment, an emotional mistake, and did something and they're put away or they did something and they're killed by one of their own or by the police or whatever or the slow death of drug addiction, alcoholism, junk food, sugar. Those are drugs too. Slowly killing yourself just for a bit of relief from, from, from the, the manhunt that, that, that we're, we're part of. We didn't sign up for this. We came into the world like anybody else. You know, we, 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 we came here not knowing anything, and some of us did. Some of us came back. My mother always told me I came from somewhere. <laughs> I was always this way. I was always this way, even on my own family. I got to say it. My mother's aunt that raised her after my mother's parents transitioned early from two years old, two unrelated situations. My mother's aunt, Pretty much, if you saw, she was a white woman. She was black, but there's a big mixture there. And when you look at her, you're like, who is this white lady? Straight up. 
And her uncle, my granduncle, I guess you'd call it granduncle, right? Grand aunt, granduncle. He, you can see he was black, but he had a lighter complexion. He had no problem with it. But one thing that pissed me off, that turned me off to my mother's aunt, we were up in Harlem. My, my father, uh, me, the aunt, and the uncle. And that was back in 1977 when my mother was at Sloan Kettering Hospital for having her breast removed because of a malignant tumor, cancerous tumor. People say, oh, you're telling too much. No, but you need to hear these stories because we all go through stuff. And that made me different at that particular year because I could see what my mother's mortality and my mortality. I know I can be up out of here and anybody I love can be up out of here any day. And that really affects me. That's why I like to express myself every day. And if I love you all, I want to say it. It's not all you keep saying it. No, because there's going to be a time when you want to say, and you can't say it. Or they won't hear it. You can say it, but they won't hear it on the physical. Maybe they'll feel it on a spiritual level. But I want you to know my passion for my people, which really piss me off half the time because it's like being a coach. And I don't think I know anything more than anybody else. But it's like being a coach on a great team that have great players that have great discipline, but they can't seem to get it together. They might be staying up late at night whatever, you know, doing little practices against. And I know I have a great team, and I know we're winners, but why are we where we are? Yes, I stated a lot of reasons, but there's nothing that we can't overcome if we put our heads together. And what hurt, hurts me is that we're so stupid, we turn against each other like we don't already have stuff going on against us. So the plan is in to take over our minds. They say, well, this guy lands from in his mouth. We don't like him, but he'll, he ain't going to be around. He ain't going to be around 50 years from now. He's 61 in April. How much longer? Well, you know what? If I live to 80, 110, if I'm 110, there's going to be some type of technology if this world is going to stay progressive and I'm, I'm still alive, which I know I'm going to eke out every minute. I'm going to be on there saying something. World's oldest podcaster. <laughs> Whatever. That's what I'm here to do. Speak what I see. Because there's too many people in denial. We, we are in a war and we are in denial looking for escapism. We got dudes who, who'd rather put a penis in their mouth and, and escape being a real man because in their mind it's too hard to be a man. So, so when you go to these jobs and you have a guy that you're going up against for the job, it could be you and the next guy. Same exact credentials. Let's make something up to prove a point. Same exact credentials, same exact resume, work experience, everything, except you are straight and he's straight up gay. It's almost like a secret society. It's almost like hire the gay man first because he's no threat. His penis is not going to bring about life. His penis is not going to be a threat to the white woman. Even if you don't want the white woman, the straight man, these men feel that it's a threat because of genetic annihilation. And that's a fear with them, but they're not going to tell you that. So they want to see you as a woman, black man. They want to see you as a thug because they can lock you away. Use your strength against you. Like with Taekwondo, use your energy, use the opponent's energy against them. Or use your real, true powerful masculinity against you. That's why I'm not saying we can't be aggressive. We got to be shrewd in this obstacle course of a Western world and really the whole world because the whole world is learning about us through the eyes of someone else and it's, it's, it's making them think of us a certain way. Even here in Ghana, now, you all know I like to talk, but not just to babble. Some people want to hear themselves talk. I've gotten into some meaningful conversations with men and women here who are too scared to either get on the camera or even just the audio. I would say, listen, okay, I can understand the camera thing because the people out here are very conservative in how they act. They don't want to make trouble. They don't want to make waves. And so they look at a person like me or most um, black Americans, uh, uh, American Africans coming here. Oh, y'all are too loud. Y'all, y'all cause trouble. You, you question and challenge the status quo. We don't do that. But you know what was shocking to me when I spoke to them? I said, "Listen, be honest with me. 
you're not going to do a recording on an audio. You're not going to do a video. If you don't have to. It's your choice. But tell me honestly, what do you think about black people who are coming from America to live here? And they hesitated. I got about four or five good answers with that. And the bottom line, if I, if I, if I fuse all the answers together, they're afraid, especially of the black men. They're afraid of us. They think the sisters are too confrontational, too loud, and they think the brothers have short fuses and will whip out and shoot you or want to fight you for the slightest thing. Now, those weren't their exact words, and I'm going to say it that way. Perception. Now, they may have had situations where on a cultural level, the customer service in Ghana, I have to tell you, sucks. <laughs> I live here. I love it here. But I got to be real and truthful with you. You'll go into a restaurant. You'll see three or four waitresses leaning up by the counter on their phones. And you're going to sit there for 20 minutes. And you after staring at them, then when they come to you, sometimes it's that attitude. And your order's never really fulfilled right. I can't eat hot, 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 spicy, 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 hot, hot, hot. If I do, it's because I adjust a little bit of it because it's my taste. And you ask them, listen, please, so are you sure? Do you understand? Nothing hot, no hot, nothing added, nothing. They make it hotter. I'm like, didn't you, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that I can see in those situations where somebody would haul off and get loud. But that's the perception. But I think it's a damn shame that the perception of us has been spun by someone else and those willing to participate in the music and in the movies. So now uh, our pseudo reputation precedes us. It's just like when Eddie Murphy and Raw way back in the mid 80s. Remember Eddie Murphy wrote a stand up routine and he was speaking about foreigners who met him for the first time. How are you, Eddie? Eddie, that's Eddie, that's Eddie Murphy, the F you man, F you Eddie. <laughs> See how powerful the media is even back then. So anybody who's speaking truth or, or exemplifying black manhood in a decent, upstanding, high moral value way is a threat to their plans to destroy us. Because we can't uphold those things. So we have got to be under attack, smeared, and lied on by any means necessary and by every means necessary. But they're using this thing. I have to say it, and this is my opinion. If there's any homosexuals in the chat room or watching this after, you can leave your opinion. I'm not going to be mad at you. Right? Right? But at first, sometimes when I would speak this way, oh, I'm not part of any agenda. No, I, I don't know anything about the agenda because it's something that you like that they're pushing. Now, come on, y'all. I'm not saying the members of the LGBTQ or same gender loving. Is, they got the black faction, right? They say same gender loving, right? Like, I'm not saying you a card carrier member, but by you being in it, you're helping to push it. The ultimate form of birth control. Right? The ultimate form of birth control. And you got to say, God, dog, they're pushing this thing for such a small population in the United States. The way they make it seem is like this huge population. But it's rather small when I saw the numbers. And I'm sorry, like, I read a lot, but... It's not like I'm sitting here for like, I'm going to sit here for uh, eight hours and prepare this and get this fact. And I'm going to start doing that with certain things. But, you know, it's common sense. Open your eyes and read. Open your eyes and look. And there are reasons for everything. I'm not hating on anybody. Because if there was a person of that persuasion walking down the street, minding their business, they got mobbed by somebody trying to kill them or really hurt them, I'm going to jump in that bad boy because that's a human being. That's somebody's child. Now, if you go up as a man and grab some man's balls or something against his will, he smacks the, te the, taste, the taste and the teeth out your mouth, you know, I'm going to keep on walking. You can't do that. You can't violate anybody. But why is it pushed where we are the face of this? When traditionally it was their practice. Beat their women in the cave. 
and come out and, and pluck each other in the backside. What, what, what's that all about? I remember when I was driving the bus in Orlando, Florida, at Lynx, the bus company I drove at for a good number of years. They had a neighborhood that uh, was really bad, and they had the young kids that would come out and go to Universal Studios. So now they stopped that. They stopped the kids from that neighborhood and any uh, unescorted, basically, right, from coming in because they used to go in there and mob the place, snatch things, grab little white girls behind in front of their daddies and just wild out. So they had to have the cops ride on my bus straight up. You look at Orlando, Florida, like it's just this big, beautiful tourist destination. But this is what had to happen. We had a, a, a pickup truck with two police that drove behind me, and we had two that got on. And after a while, it was four in that pickup truck and two that got on. And it was packed. And one of the police officers, a white guy, he was with the sergeant, a black guy. I forgot his name. I like the guy, though, the black guy, the sergeant. We used to have some very deep conversations. And this guy, he wasn't a sellout. I got to look him up. I, I know he looks like somebody. Oh, okay, he looks like somebody I know off of YouTube. But when the black sergeant went to the back, because some of the kids are back there acting up. I mean, when they're acting up, they're getting violent, punching people in the face. and You know, you couldn't get past this cop. But I was waiting for them kids to try something on me. I was waiting. Plus, they had the digital cameras that recorded the audio and the video. Somebody was going to get hurt. You ain't going to stab me or spit on me or whatever. I was ready to throw hands even from behind the wheel and feet. But there was a gay guy sitting in the front. Well, not the front front, but like a little about six feet back. And so the white cop looked at the gay guy. And so he knew my first name. So he said, Lance, uh, what do you think about that? I thought he was talking to the go talking about the gorgeous woman that was like sitting two seats from. I said, man, she's gorgeous. Ah, so what would you do if you had that? I said, man, I, I just said she's gorgeous, man. I'm not going to go all there. You know what I mean? I'm a man. You know, <laughs> what, what do men do? I'm not going to do that. But, you know, he's like. Who are you talking about? I said, the woman over there. She said, no, I was talking about the dude over there. I said, so, what, what do you mean by that? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm driving. I almost ran off the road. So he says, oh, let's put it this way. Uh, it's not gay unless you push. I was like, oh, snap. What are you telling me that for? I didn't say that, but, and he smiled. Like, what's this, some kind of like homo, like undercover, like trying to test if I'm, a homo mason or something, some, some homo masonic way of, are you seeking the light? No, I don't want that light. <laughs> oh, I couldn't believe it. How some of you take it so light. Again, I'm not attacking you for what you do. That's your spiritual situation. But we are under attack. And it's not a paranoid rant. It's becoming, if you can't see it from every angle, how they portray us, how, 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 they, how they come after us. They don't, wanna, they, they don't want us to learn. They want us to be in this, you know, and, and it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy because so many of us are going for the ignorance and, and that imagery of being the lowest of everything. But we, we sure can want to be the best basketball player. But do we want to be a scholar? Do we want to learn things and convey the messages and teach people? Do we want to get a skill? as opposed to a piece of paper, and you go with the piece of paper to a job, and the job says, oh, no, there's no openings, and you spent all of this money getting this piece of paper for a degree in quotology to spit back what they tell you. That's not training you to be a thinker. I'm not knocking anybody who has gone to college or university, but are you a thinker? And this is why we have people from other countries that don't look like us, that come here and don't even speak English, and get their children behind them to learn everything here, open up businesses and create empires. But we think we have to go a certain way, get the approval of the slave man. And we always get the short end of the stick. When are you going to realize that? But again, in the midst of all of this, the, down the list of everything I read to you at the beginning of this show, we're going against each other. That's the problem that I have. Intelligent people, too intelligent, brilliant people who are undermining the race. I'm going to speak about race. I have a right to speak about race. 
in America and all over the world, they break down statistics by race, which means I can't talk about it now. So why do we go against each other? We're the biggest ones going against black manhood. I'm not going to blame the sisters. I'm going to blame some of the sisters for running with this stuff. A man does you wrong. There will be a man or two or three or four or five that will do you wrong in this lifetime. But there'll be that one who'll do right. I'm not talking about doing you in the bed. I'm going to treat you with respect, upholding you as someone special, encouraging you, protecting you. There's lots of men out here who want to do that. But there's so many women who are hurt and speaking through their emotional side that that has blurred the logical mind. I have to say that in most cases, most men think logically. Most good black men have a logical way of thinking. I'm not putting down the sisters, but the ones who are hurt will see a good black man right in front of them and not know it because of all of the emotions blurring their view. And then you get on social media. And you have these movements of these women. That's all they speak about. Black men is black men eat this. Another black man he bad. He this. He that. And other people see this. So if your own sister speaks this way about you, you have that long list of things in society that we have to deal with, and then we're being effeminized. I can see why so many men just want to be to themselves. They're all good sisters now who understand this now. I applaud you. And probably half of the sisters in the world that understand are right here in this chat room. So I applaud you. That you, You're all we have. Thank you for not turning away from us. You may have been hurt. I'm, I, I'm quite sure you have been. But you look past that situation. And maybe you didn't have anything to do with it. And maybe you did. Maybe it was a way of choosing better. But we all have to learn. I can't go down the list of everything. But at the end of the day, it's the biggest victory for us to stay together, build our families, build our communities, love each other, stick together through thick and thin, and things will happen. Because the aliens that we're looking for up in the sky are right in our faces every single day. And we don't realize it. The shape-shifting reptilian a aliens that smile in your face and, and, and can even read you well now. They know more about us than we know about ourselves. Artificial intelligence, social media, gathering up all this information on us down through the years. And there are alien factions, the demonic factions out here, that, have, that, that, that can shapeshift. They know the buttons to push. They're learning. What's artificial intelligence going to be five years from now? They say there's going to be that moment where it decides to take over, that we're no good anymore, that, th that this thing is better. Elon Musk, the brain chip, saying how you can take a person's thoughts in essence and put it into a robot body. What kind of twisted, perverted man... Is that For really, really and truly? These are the kind of things you think about. That man's an alien. He's an alien. He works with the things that come from the other realms and dimensions. That for them to rule this planet, and and what was the um oh god what is it in Atlantic Atlanta, Atlanta um, the Georgia Stones? Am I correct? The Georgia the Georgia Stones, right? Where they said that the majority of the population must be wiped out. Who said this? Who wants this? Something that wants to take over this beautiful planet. The systems on it ain't no good of government and the rulership, but the planet on its own, it loves us. It gives us the fruits and the proper climates that we thrive in around the equator. I don't know not one of us who wants to go up to the North Pole or South Pole and just chill. Or oh, you'll chill all right. <laughs> A beautiful planet that someone doesn't want us to have. They're changing our vibration. They're manipulating our DNA. They're manipulating our thought processes. Same gender loving people. I'm not coming at you. I'm just telling you what it is. 
For you to look at a man. For you to look at a man as a man. And look at his ass and go, mm, damn. What? Come on. Now, if it's a woman and you're attracted to the woman, there's certain natural mechanisms in place mentally, physically, and spiritually. I believe there's things about the attraction between a man and a woman that we don't even know about. When that man is attracted to the woman and a woman is attracted to the man, not just the quick attraction, but that deep respect and love that's cultivated, that baby's coming. It may not come for three years, but there's something between that energy, and they don't want us to have that energy between each other to bring forth strong kids. See, our birth rates are not going down. Somebody else's are. They lie, and every year that comes with 13% of the population. Well, if you slice a pie up 500 different ways, <laughs> each slice is going to seem small. Because you got folks from different countries in America and all throughout the Caribbean who speak Spanish, and they don't claim being black. So that keeps the numbers down. But they'll whitewash the country and invite all these Ukrainians over, give them the citizenship, bring all these other migrants in, that will vote for these people later on down the line. Give them all this, give them all that. Anything to dilute us, anything to take down our numbers by any means necessary, we don't see it. That's why I say, hasn't anyone even noticed black manhood is under attack? And when I say black manhood, again, I'm not dismissing the sisters. I can say both, but I said it that way so we can see it a little better. Because where the man goes, the woman will be. Where the woman goes, the man will be. That is the way it's supposed to be. Remember that commercial? Oh, that's the way it is. Truly, 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 it's you going to do today. I think I'll share. I'm catching all kind of flashbacks. I don't know. My brain is like, I got a big head. I got terabytes of memories in my head. <laughs> Uh, Al Kevula man, welcome on in Freddy Freddy. Who else? I've been running my mouth. Monk Million. Welcome on in Flash Mel. Yes. Oh my Shade. Am I saying it right? Please, I don't mean to mess it up if I mess it up, but I'm in a zone right now. And I'm flowing. I'm not gonna stay on too long, but I'm gonna put it down because this was supposed to be done earlier, and like I said, I had something time-sensitive to do. It was done, and I got back earlier than I thought, and I said, you know what? Let me um, do this show, because I was up from about maybe, I'd say about maybe 3, 30? Nature's just taking over, getting up all early, you know, so I fall asleep a lot earlier, you know. Yes, Freddy, Freddy, the government ain't. <laughs> uh, but it's extreme though and there are things that I feel they're doing to us maybe I'm going to sound like a conspiracy theorist but our very thoughts our essence I remember back in the 60s I was a young boy and saw strong black men again we don't even. We shouldn't even have to say strong. That's something that comes standard. Do you ever see the most expensive Mercedes Benz with roll-up windows with a handle? No, because you know that amenity comes standard. We are, are strong. Our sisters are strong, but they treat us and try to break us down to be weak. So we have to proclaim this all the time. No, I am strength. I remember walking wherever I lived in the United States, whether it's New York or Florida and a couple other states I've been in temporarily. When I walk, I'm walking strong. I'm walking strong to represent my people. I'm walking strong to let you know if you are an enemy with something up your sleeve, you have a fight on your hands. On all levels, not just a physical fight. But mentally, spiritually, and physically, very few can handle me. And I'm a, you all should say this too. 
This world is there like acid to tear that knowing away. They love when you have doubt. They love when you shuffle down the street and don't have a proud stride. They love it when you disrespect your sisters and just look at them like, like an like a object of pleasure and you sing it out in these rap songs. Rap in itself is a beautiful thing, but it's been morphed and tampered with when the corporate interest came over to take it over. But we turn around now, oh, these damn rappers. Yeah, they are sellouts to, to, to put the stuff out there. Lil Nas X, Sexy Red, Saucy Santana. And, and, and we, we, when they get on, we watch us. Watch us in, this, in, our, in our most reduced seat. If you had someone in your household who was on drugs, addicted to heroin, not now, would you sit there and just watch them? You'd want them to get well. You'd want them to stop ingesting these substances in their body to make them the way that they are. So why do we, why, why do we celebrate the toxic behaviors? Because it's cool? Because it's on TV? Because it's getting all of these hits on social media? And here's another thing I want to tell you all. Don't think a lot of this filth that you see on Instagram that has all of these hits or Facebook or whatever is a natural thing where people just watch it so much. They can take away your hits, they can take away your numbers, and they can add it on because they know if something seems to be active and it seems and appears that everybody's looking at it, you're going to look at it too. You're going to look at it too. They don't want the good stuff that teaches us something and builds us up. I feel great knowing who I am, and nobody can take that away from me. Even out here in the motherland, you go down to the tourist areas or you go out to even certain remote areas and there's always a sprinkling of them. And when they see you, see, this is my experience too, right? When they see you, especially the women, they look at you to see if you're going to look at them with a bit of shock. Like they love that rush. Oh, you're not used to seeing anything like me out here in the motherland. I see you checking me out. Talking about the white woman. I, I walk on past, don't even pay no mind. You out here with, the, with these sisters out here, you're you going to think that I'm, I'm going to pay you any mind or any man's going to pay you any mind? And some do. And that's the sickness, too, that we have. We have so many brothers out here, and we have them in America, too. But out here in the motherland, what? Let a Gumby built white woman come walking down the street. I say Gumby. Remember how flat Gumby was? If you don't remember Gumby, Google it. G-U-M-B-Y. Gumby turns sideways, you don't see nothing. These women can jump in a mail slot and not touch the sides. <laughs> like that game Operation, where you had to pull out the bones without touching the sides. If you touch the sides, eh. You remember that game, Al Kiblin, man? That's right. They, um, mm, that's right, Freddy, Freddy. Yeah, you remember, Beverly, when, when you here, I know we can go back. <laughs> yeah, Gumby, yeah, Gumby with the flat... With the flat head, it was, it was like he had, you know, the old kitten plague haircut. His head was shaped with a slant. <laughs> and these women put on their little thongs and go to the beach. It's like it's an like empty clothesline blowing in the wind. Ain't no cheeks to grab onto it. And, and these men just walk past their beautiful sisters and, you know, the tee hee and the key key is smile when you don't feel like it because an angel has dropped down out of the sky. And this is the attention that they expect because when all, when they come out here, most of these men, even when they're with their women, they're glancing over at them and they just feel good. And here comes Lance Scurve and they're walking down the street coming my way and they act like they're going to look at me, but I see them with the peripherals and even in front of me, I keep my face straight and I keep walking and they're looking, they're looking, they're look, they'll even stop you. Excuse me, um, uh, do you know where I can go to so-and-so and so-and-so? I said, wait a second, excuse me, can I ask you something? I'm, I'm a clown. I'm going to start videotaping some of this stuff too. I'm going to have my little camera act like I'm not videotaping, and I'm going to videotape the bad boy. Wait, weren't you that lady in America who told me to go back to Africa? Then what the hell are you doing here? And they start blinking their eyes. Bleep, 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 bleep. <laughs> yeah, have fun. What you going to do? Call a racist cop? You ain't got nothing out here. See? And so many of the brothers out here don't understand 
the dynamics of certain things because they've been brainwashed. They've been brainwashed to think that white is better. And, and, you know, when you go to the U.K. or you go to America, you better get one of those. And there's a lot of them in, in the Caribbean also. I know a lot of, lot, look, I can say every island, but I know Jamaica real good. And you got a lot of angry Jamaican men running around here right now. Because, see, when a lot of them first came to America, see, I can speak from both sides because my father, Jamaican, my mother's American. My father was not like that. He was an old school, hard working dude. He was old school, y'all. Born in 1916. So he didn't know nothing about this boomba clock business. He knew about the words and stuff, but he wasn't a clown Jamaican. But you see, you have a lot of them in from other parts, but really and truly Jamaica because it's so close to the United States. And when a lot of them come to America, oh, they think, a lot of them think, and I'm getting off subject a little bit here, but I have to I put my foot in this and so I have to finish it up. A lot of them think that, oh, yes, uh, uh, I'm not like the black American. We are different. We work hard. We're not like the lazy black Americans because, see, they've been taught that through the media, not knowing what, what we went through America. Right? See, I understand both sides. I understand even the side from over here in the motherland because I talk to people and vibe with them. And with my real friends, which the circle might be small, I have open dialogue and conversation with them. You see what I mean? Oh, no, 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 Golden Brown. No, 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 no. They've been around me. I'm going to tell you what happened. I was at a party. I didn't date none, but I was at a party. And um, it was a mixed party. And I was, uh, <laughs> I was in the second bathroom. I met this young lady. We were talking for a while, so... It, nobody was using the bathroom. It was a second little half bath, and we were kissing in there. So this white girl came in there trying to use the bathroom, cut the light on, saw us in there. I said, oh, okay, no, we're out of here. So you can, no, no, you can stay in. And she knew the black girl that I was kissing up with. That's all we did was kiss up a little bit. She dropped down to her knees. I'm like, yo, where you going? Where you going? She was drunk as a skunk, but still, that's what she wanted to do. And no, 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 uh -uh. Come on, you know you guys. You guys love your cock sucked. Sorry to be so lewd. That's what she said. I said, well, my name is not you guys. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. How'd the old rap song go? I ain't going to be able to do it. <laughs> I said, you need to go use the other bathroom. You interrupted us. You came in here with that. You act like you had to go. You was just being nosy because you know he was in here. You probably wanted to do her too. That's how they are. Want to be an Oreo sandwich, cookie, whatever, right in the middle and bookended by black folks. Don't let me get nasty, y'all. I've had too many experiences. It's time for you to come back with some adult shows. But a show of hands, maybe on Patreon or whatever, you know, for a dollar or whatever. Once a week, we'll talk some adult stuff that's still rooted in righteousness, but I have a bigger range of things I can talk to, talk about, and I'll use some words. By a show of hands. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, cosmic energy. And that's why they love doing that to the black men. They love doing that to the black men. Because it's not about, oh, I love doing this. No. You're, you're, you're getting an energy that you can't get from nowhere else. It's not just a matter of sperm. It's a life force. It's a rush. Come on, y'all. I don't want to get too adult up in here. But how do I say this? Black man and a black woman, they're um, behind closed doors. And... One's performing an act on the other one, and they take turns, whatever have you. But when you hit that high point, and you're the one giving, and this is a, this is a powerful black woman with wisdom of stature, and she starts to release, that is a blast. You feel that energy to the point, even if you didn't do nothing yet, you, you lay in there post or gas like, whoo, damn, baby, that was good. What you mean? You ain't do nothing yet? No, but still, just to be part of that, and vice versa. And that's what they want. They want that blast. It's a spiritual thing, and they don't think sex is just some, ah, I just came a little bit physically, and that was it. Uh-uh. There's more to it than that. I need to talk about that again. I need to talk about that on an adult show. Oh, there's so many things I want to talk about, and I feel so free. 
to do so. Just let it flow. Because we're all adults here. But that's what they want. And that's why these men, these gay white men, are envious of the black woman. Jealous of y'all. And you think it's acceptance when they invite you into their circles, their clubs, their friends. Oh, me and Brad, we've been together for 12 years. We're going to finally tie the knot. We want you there, sister. And you, <laughs> oh, I'll be glad to. What? But you're putting your brothers down, but you'd be glad to go to some. <laughs> I got to be careful because they'll say it's hate speech and take the video down. But it is what it is. And you got that gay friend that you hang out with. You'd rather hang out with him than find a real black man, but your little son sees you hanging out with this dude. I'm going to surprise you girls tonight when we go out. What you going to do? What you going to do? Oh, you'll see. He comes out in the dress, decked out and made up better than you. It didn't take me long to do my makeup. I went to the department store. You know you go to the department store and they do a free makeup thing on you. That's what they do. They save money too. And mix and meld with you. And learn by association how to conduct themselves as a wannabe female. And you say, black manhood is not under attack? It is. They would rather us not be here. We, we are a deterrent by our own very presence in this world to keep this world and the balance of nature stabilized. And you wonder why the weather's going crazy. You see these little things where white ladies sitting on a bench with a white man and the birds start attacking them. <laughs> and they got to get up and run. Squirrels start going crazy. Because things are in balance. Not just with us, but nature. Why do you want to tamper with something? Why do you want to put pig jeans in a dang one mango? Why I need that? Why? So you can have a longer shelf life and I'm eating this bad stuff. You already jacked it up, fertilizing it with atrazine. Right? They say you, you must soak it in, in vinegar for 20 minutes. They say there's another way to soak in your stuff scrubbing your fruits, whatever, and soaking it to get that stuff out of you. And they say it stays in your system 24 to 48 hours. But if you keep eating stuff, it's still going to stay in there. That's the chemical way of getting you. What about the psychological way that they get our kids that have transvestites going to the school, sitting up there looking like Bozo the Clown, teaching our kids what? Look, they don't even know the basics yet, and you're putting this stuff in their head. How about the school where they had a, a room where they called it the feel-good room? And they have a little break, a little recess, and you can go on in there and, and feel good. Tell them they can rub themselves and feel good, and they can rub each other. I got to dig that one up because somebody's going to say I'm lying. I've talked about it before. I did a show on it, not a whole show, but I did it partially. What's up with that? And we can't say anything. We can't, no, no, we, we say things, but in their mind, oh, you don't have the right because it's hate speech. And if it's hate speech and we find you on social media with hate speech, we're going to give you a pink slip. <laughs> While they wear their pink slip. <laughs> hey, this is sick, y'all. 2024, who would have thought our Kevin man, Beverly Scott, y'all go back with me. Way back, back in the time. Who would have thought that we'd be so preoccupied as a society with this foolishness? I mean, we're not. They push this stuff on us, and we can't say anything. I mean, what's the next fashion? Wear some shitty drawers on your head and walking down the street, and there's going to be some fools amongst us who's going to outdo everybody. Oh, he had a, 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 a two pounds of shit in his drawers when he wanted. I have four. We always want to run with, with what they put out and outdo them. But then we're going to hate on each other. We jump to what they say do. If it's on the cover of a magazine, a, a, a documentary, a movie, or some star busts out with some weird thing, we run with it. We're already under attack and we readily embrace this stuff and we run with it. How stupid can we be? How stupid can you be? I remember <laughs> there was this girl. 
I used to like her younger sister. Nothing ever happened. This is real, real, real young, right? And the older sister, I knew she was a lesbian. I had the gift of discernment. This is all I already knew. But she, she, she despised me. And I was working out, you know, I wasn't what I became when I started competing, but I was looking pretty good for the, you know, age that I was. So once a week, I'd treat myself to some junk food. I'm not going to lie. I'd go up there to White Castle, which is the equivalent of uh, crystals in other states, but White Castle's are tiny little burgers that they would call murder burgers, or, you know, you, you go to the bathroom, it runs out of you and all that stuff, but they were tasty, right? So she worked there. So she's the one that, that filled my order. And she kept looking between the little, you know, like, like to make sure that was me and the order and everything. Man, I went home. It was like when I opened my mouth to even put the burger in, I started running to the bathroom. No, it was after I ate. But it was something worse with that. Some, she did something to that, to that food. She did something to that food. You know what I mean? And it's like, even back then, like, there, there, there was, we were, I'm not saying we were ready for that or we wanted that, but we were ready made with, with the toxic stuff after all those hundreds of years of what happened to us. And even what happened to us, those over here in the motherland, what happened to them, how they were convinced that they were nothing. I was watching a documentary on Tanzania the other night, and they were saying how many hundreds of thousands of black people were killed when the Germans came over there and took over. See, there's a lot of blood shed over here that nobody talks about or they don't talk about it. But you, that's why you had them fearful over here and in check and doing the bidding. And like I said before, that's why half the leaders are not going to do anything revolutionary because they're scared of getting assassinated. They say, yeah, you can be president. Yeah, you go on and do little things and talk big and everything. But we the ones that's ruling. And when we say jump, you better tap dance. That's right. You better be there to service us as much as we need. If we sit down on the bowl to shit, you better be there to wipe. I shit, you wipe. And they do it. They do it. And they want to talk tough to the people out here. But that's why they get their, their perks, their cuppets. You see? This is worldwide. It's a worldwide problem. It's a worldwide problem. And as long as there are people in those positions who will work against us that look like us, and those who look like us who are just so far gone and delusional and thinking that they're not, it's never going to go anywhere. Like I was saying earlier, even when they look like us, you better vet them because you don't know their mentality. You don't know their allegiances. There are people who can't stand me because of the way I talk. I'm sorry. I'm not going to die of emotional constipation. I'm born to tell it like it is. You can try to isolate me. You can, and I, that isolation only makes me fester up even more. I get more creative and more outspoken. And really and truly, I love my company. I love the company of the wonderful people here. We gave conversations. When I was in America, we meet back and forth or FaceTime. I'm cool that way. Because we're on the same wavelength. But I don't need these people who don't like themselves, got their own drama they don't want to work on. They want to blame everybody else. They want to blame you. They want to hate on you because your light be gone. You won't find me. I'm ninja. I'm out here now. I'll show you some videos in the street, whatever. But I'm ninja out here too. You know, half the people who came from where I came from are all jacked up. Wearing their costumes and you must. And I was speaking to a young lady who lives out here, who moved out here. Around the same, a little bit after I did. No one from social media. She says, Lance, I've never seen nothing like this before in my life. Even the Americans that move out here are delusional, 90% of them. This is what she said. I was clapping. <laughs> they hate on you. If you don't, if you don't just... Try to just wear the African garb and wrap up your head every day and change your name. And I, actually, there were two people I was speaking to today about that. She said, I just want to come out here and live my life. I like those things, everything, but I just wanted to get away from the United States and live my life. And they've mad at me because I don't run up to this meeting and run up to that meeting. And, you know, you got the men, older men, they retired. And they, you know, just one big shindig. I peeped it. 
I used to come and do all the events in it. Nah. Mm, one-on-one, if, you, if you're about it. I'm not reaching a chaser for nothing. Not on that level. So folks thought, oh, he's on YouTube. He's going to run everybody down. And, mm-mm. I'm down to help somebody who's, who's worthwhile. But I'm not going to sit here and, and try to put up this facade where, let me tell you something. Let me, let me really tell you something. I've been in these YouTube streets and, and Black Planet streets and Facebook streets and before they were streets. <laughs> Lori Brown, how are you? I just looked up at the screen. Jennifer Rice, I see you. Let me see who else I may have missed. I don't think I missed too many people. But welcome on in. Welcome on in. Oh, God, did I lose my point? Oh, God, let me get it. I got such a big head. It's, it's soon in there somewhere. You ever see something and you're cooking something and you're thinking, what is that, a little bug in there? You try to put your finger, your hands are clean, and it pushes it down more. And it's like, ah, I got to get this thing out. Well, that's what just happened with my thoughts. But like I said, with those who look like us, oh, here's the point. Here's the point. Here's the point. These people, look, you know I'm all about us ascending to get better. But if you don't have any desire to do so and you want to pull me down into the lower vibrations of gossip and resenting people and did you hear about this, I don't want to deal with you. Then people just go ahead and send me things. <laughs> oh, I'm all, I don't want to see this. Block them. Half the time, I'm, I'm being honest with you, on social media, half the time, no, 95% of the time, and that's a low number. I'm going to tell you something that I know because, see, I... I'm getting like Ralph Cramden. You know that I know that you know that I know. No, I know things. I've been out here too long. I got proof of certain things, and I'm not going to get into the lower vibration of blowing people up unless people send me photos and text messages and you know, the pictures and videos. Like, what? And I'm not here to assess. I don't say judge because judging is when you don't know. When you assess something, you know. Like I say, if you're standing 12 feet from the wall approximately, and I say, well, how many feet? Hey, I think about 11 and a half feet, maybe 11 feet. But if you have the tape measure, you're going to give me the exact measurement. I got the tape measure, y'all. And 95% of these people who are, I am all for my people and the liberation of my people and blah, 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 friggin' frauds. Narcissistic frauds who love to hear themselves talk but haven't done a damn thing. Where did they come from? What is their history? What is their background? See, it's so easy to jump on social media and talk the talk and put your costume on and look so convincing and use all the psychological tricks to convince people, but what is your history? Were you thinking this way when you were dating all them white women? Huh? Were you thinking this way when you, you, come on now. That's why I say there's a lot of us that come to the country that when we finally see what it's like to be in America and how we're treated, and you got your nigga wake up calls, not call, but calls, (laughs) and you realize that you're no better than the people that you looked down on when you first came to the country. Now you want to be mad and run an about face. Now you want to come at them, right? Talk about them, but you still got a little taste for that white meat. See, there's a lot of things I know that I ain't saying. I ain't going to say. I would love to say it, but I'm not going to bring myself down on the vibration that way. I want to keep it, you know, this is not a dirty, low-down, revealing type thing. Did you hear about this? Did you hear about that? I'm sick and tired of it. We all had that nosy lady in the neighborhood who sat on the porch all day in the front porch. Or was always sweeping and peeking, sweeping and peeking. Had to overhear and be nosy about everything. A child, you ain't here, here. But I saw so-and-so coming out of so-and-so house three in the morning. What the hell were you doing up three in the morning? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, let me see. This looks juicy. Let me put this up here. Lori Brown. Let me just see here. I'm hearing the transgender is what black male entertainers really want. They no longer want authentic women. It's being said this will be the norm. They're pushing it to be the norm, and I can believe that. I can believe that. 
Also, men have become so desensitized to what a real woman is. You are, this is not me saying it now, you are an object, right? You are, you are like a naked doll, right, that needs to be dressed and needs to be, you are supposed to fit the narrative of what they want and whatever twisted sexual desires that they want. You're there for that. And porn has desensitized men. Men put on porn to masturbate. I'm quite sure most of you know that because a lot of women do it too, right? And when they masturbate, they are focusing in on what they see. They don't care about that woman's well-being. They don't care if her rent is paid. They don't care if she's being loved properly. No, that penis in the movie becomes his penis. And anything that woman or women do, he's feeling it as he strokes himself with that jaw of Vaseline or any kind of lubrication. <laughs> it can get desperate, y'all. I'll just say this. I walked in on a situation in someone's home. They didn't know that their son was home. Whole house smelled like mayonnaise. Mayonnaise? Why the whole house smell like he was in the he was in his room beating off of mayonnaise. I guess his uh his lubrication ran out. He got desperate. Oh man. Had the nerve to put him put the mayonnaise back, scooped out some and put it back. Oh man, I don't want no mayonnaise no more. Anyway, they they focus on that and so now the real woman who can really vibe with them, they don't want that. They want to get direct to the point. So when they get direct to the point, some cross over. Some will say, well, I know it's a dude, but he got them fake estrogen breasts. They'll do for me. I know it's a dude, but the makeup is right. Got the wig on and the lip skin, and they know exactly what to do. That's, what, that's how they think. It, 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 it's a transitional, it's a, it's a thing where they want to present this thing and keep putting it in your head. Now you got bisexual porn. And they don't put the scene, and I'm being, I'm telling you because I keep up with everything. I have discussions with so many people. I know people in the industry. I was close to it myself at one point. Not to do no mess like that, but I almost got recruited into doing adult movies. And so I found out the prerequisite was that you had to do gay stuff before to prove yourself. These days you have your own camera. You can do things on your own, produce your own stuff. But back then, with them Kanye West people that he had a problem with, well, they, they ran it and they still have a big hold on it with their holy selves, acting all holy. Now, I'll never forget the day. They were saying, yeah, when you have a good body, you go going down there, you get paid, man. There's some little thing you do with a woman. No, I don't know who it is. Really? Let's check it out. I'm young. Me and my friend. I'm not going to say his name. If you listen, you remember that. I remember. Nice office. I think it was like either 3rd Avenue or Lexington Avenue in the 20s. In lower Manhattan. Not lower Manhattan, but like that part of Manhattan. Man, the secretary out in the front. They buzzed us in. We sat in this room and went in the other. And then you saw like framed pictures of the faces of all these porn stars. And so he was impressed. He was like, oh, well, I, and I remember, I'll never forget the way he said this thing. You guys are good looking guys, and we would love to get into the process of star building with you. I think like, this guy must be from Boston or something. And all I can remember, star building. I'm going to wait for him to say star kiss. <laughs> star kiss tuna. <laughs> yeah, so, um, okay, let, let, oh, let me see this. Let me see this. Cosmic Energy got a little juicy comment here. I'll come back to it, um, what I was saying, though. Men are way more wild when having sex with other men. And at that point, there are things that they do what a woman probably would not try. And the man then becomes hooked on that feeling and experiences. He, I, I can't disagree with you. But you got to have that in you. You got to have that in you. When I worked as a CEO, I used to see some guys come in basically straight. And after a time, when well, they went upstate and came back to finish out their little sentence, so they had a court case and they had to leave the prison and come down back into the county jail, you catch them in there sucking each other off. Say, wait a second, you didn't start out like this. 
right? So with this thing here, with this imagery that you see of men in drag and the gay stuff pushed and whatever, if you have a little bit of it in you, in your spirit, and it's just about a sensation, you're a dead duck. You're going to fall for it. Because me as a man, it's got to be a woman. It's, it's, it's a woman, a real woman that does it for me. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect. As a matter of fact, the imperfections are a turn on. You know what I mean? Like, like you don't have to be this, you know. No. It's the passion and the realness and the spiritual bond. Maybe I wasn't talking about that when I was 18 years old, about no spiritual bond. You know, I was just trying to get what I can get. But I wasn't trying to get it as a predator. It was given to me. It was always easily there for whatever reason. I never had any problem. So that's why I can delve deeper into the whole thought process behind it. But these guys, for many, you have become body parts, ladies. You've become body parts. And if the body part can be presented and the friction be presented, a lot of them are going to go for it. They don't care. They're on a low vibration. So imagine one of these men being out there doing what they want to do because there's a whole lot of them and they come home to you and they bring that energy and you know something is off. There's more to sex than just we came together or we did this together and that's it. When you're really together, even if you're not together, you're creating a soul tie. You're creating a connection with this person. Like the joke I always love to say, if there's a four foot two, 500 pound freckled Limburger cheese morning breath t- type dude with thick goggle glasses and waddled down the street and farted every five seconds and you got into some, uh, you probably see that, but I don't know, hell, hell no. <laughs> but if you did, you're messing around with this man for like a year. If somebody looks at that man the wrong, the wrong way, some other woman Hey, 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 well, that's my man. You know what I mean? Like, okay, I mean, I go like that. But all I'm saying is that it blurs the imperfections when you keep dealing with somebody. You see them better and better and better. And when they're doing what they do to you and you do to them and y'all doing each other, they sleep and you're looking at them and you're like, oh, my God, this feels so good. They're so warm. They threw their leg over me. Oh, my God. But, uh, and you just get into them. In the world, sometimes I don't know what you see in this person. Because they're thinking from just a superficial mindset. Because there's other things that goes on behind those kind of contacts. So be be careful before you make the leap. Because those perverse desires can rub off on you. Now I'm not saying as a woman you're going to go out there and pick up some man in a dress. But you'll find yourself thinking about things a little bit beyond what, you know. And we all explore. We all have fetishes. I understand that. That's normal. I'm talking about some way out, I don't know why I'm thinking this thing type thing. You got to be careful because there's a lot of demonic forces out here that want to use your body for their pleasure. They want to use your body for their pleasure. So when you're open to all these things, that's the door open for them to come right on in and enjoy it and whisper things in your ear because if the man is sitting there and nobody else is around and the the door is locked, and he's masturbating, watching porn. He's got to get more and more stimulation to get the job done. Just a visual of something normal would get him. And after a while, he's got to find some six foot five Viking chick with a whip and a Czechoslovakian midget with a with blonde hair. <laughs> he gets more and more specific in their taste. And so when a man comes to you and can't get into you for you, and he, look, we have things that turn us on. As children, without being molested, we see things and, and things, you know, a little girl on a school bus sees a man peeing on a tree and sees, sees this thing. Oh, my God, it's so big. That sticks in your head. doesn't mean that you're some little kid sex fiend or whatever. It sticks in your head. And sometimes scenarios we seek to have them replayed when we're doing something. That that that's kind of it's kind of innocent, you know. You know that, that affects us. Our first time and our first situations, even if we didn't enjoy it, it leaves an imprint in our mind. See, 
So I've heard all types of stuff that could be deemed weird, but not harmful to them or anybody else. But we have men out here who they already have a ready-made template of what you are to be with them in the bedroom. It don't give a damn. You're providing friction and nothing more else. Because he already has the fantasy in his head about what he's thinking about when you're doing what you're doing. This is the way I like it. I want this. I want it this way and that way. Now, if you know yourself to a point, fine. But let the woman have a say-so in the bad boy. You know what I mean? Let things happen naturally. I, I, I know some characters in my life. I know a dude that collected sex toys and had a little bag of it and had to bring it up to his girlfriend's house and use things on her. Like she's some kind of experiment. Well, if you put this on the clip and you put this nipple clamp on and you put this butt plug in and you like, is this really intimacy? Or is this some kind of Frankenstein-like sexual <laughs> experiment from a twisted mind? And that bag became a duffel bag after. It was a big duffel bag, a big military five-foot duffel bag of all kind of lotions, sex toys, battery-operated stuff, stuff that's plugged in, outfits. And the poor girl was just a guinea pig. And that was the obvious case. But what happens if you don't know? What happens if you don't know? Remember, this is all energy. And they don't like the black man's, real black man's energy present in the world. So the Georgia Stone said that 90% of the population, whatever amount they said they want to have left over, trust me, the majority of that, we're all as black men in that number because they don't want us on this earth. It's like a scrawny little guy who wasn't considered handsome. And then you had the big muscular jock who was handsome, charismatic. He doesn't want that dude around because he can't get no play. Oh, God, I'm not going to the beach with that guy. I had people tell me that when I was doing bodybuilding. I'm not coming to the beach with you. I said, man, let's go hang out at the beach. Why don't you want to go to the beach? Well, all the girls are going to be looking at you, and, and you're going to talk to them nice, and they're going to be all around you. Well, you can talk to them, too, but, uh, but your body. I'll help you get like that, man, but, you know, people, uh, you just don't know. And the insecurities we carry. And like I said, I kind of went off the topic, but we... We're beat down with so much that it's become the norm. How could we not be paranoid? Always looking over our shoulder while trying to act cool. And then they're trying to feminize us with the chemicals. This plastic. Drinking water in plastic bottles and how it raises up your estrogen levels. The atrazine. Is a, is, a, is a thing that messes with your hormonal, down to the hormones, y'all. And there's symptoms of that in our bodies that show. I want to do a show on that. There's so much coming at us. If, you take a, if they tied you up and you had 100 people take a baseball bat and hit any other part of your body other than your head, one time, 100 people, Everybody can say, I just hit him one time. I didn't hit him multiple times. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we have so many things coming at us from so many ways that it seems like, well, maybe I'm imagining this. Maybe, maybe it's not really that because there's so many things coming at us. And we don't understand. You're right, Freddie, Freddie. The food, the vibration of this atmosphere. And remember, this is the way I feel about it. The more of us that crossover into that foolishness is the more powerful that perverse energy is because it's riding at an all-time high. There are aliens. I feel it's a spirit thing. And they feast on our decadence because we are of the highest moral code when left alone. And if we're broken down with the spiritual MSG to give us more flavor... Look at, the, look at the things on Instagram and titillating ourselves or whatever. It's a sort of thing to the aliens, to those spirits that came here, that are here. 
along with the other aliens that we can see all the time, that we think, well, they're part of us, and, 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 and we're all one unit. No, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. That's why they want to reduce us to what they do and want to normalize. No, we're too strong for that. And some of us have weakened and in our mind think it's a better thing to go along with them because they are better. You got a lot of that out here in the motherland. They may not say it. They know They know when you, people like me, when I'm talking to them, they hear me, they hey, 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 you know, what you say is the truth. And you hit them back with something, and they're like, oh, they don't know how to answer. Just start laughing. Hey, 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 nothing. You know, you'd be the first one over there when that white woman comes and say, listen, suck the dirt from under my toes. Okay, I'd love to. i love to suck dirt from under your toes. Oh, yeah. Oh, I ran out of uh, uh, toilet paper. Don't worry, I lick you clean. <laughs> I hate it. So I'm going to talk about it. It's there. So therefore, there's some of us who are the first in line to be your biggest enemy on the firing line at you. Even you walking tall as a black man is intimidating to them because they've given their manhood up, even if they didn't go as far as homosexuality. But they are weak, spineless. I can't even say black man, but you're male. You're a male that looks like me, but you don't have the ingredients. You don't have the insides. It's like when you were a young kid and you knew the kind of soda you liked to drink, even though we know we shouldn't be drinking it. There was soda. Oh, I like this particular brand and grape. I like this Fanta. I like that Shasta. Do they still have Shasta? Beverly Scott, our Kimberly man. I haven't seen Shasta in a long time. Shasta. <laughs> what was the commercial sounding like? But yeah. And then you eat that or drink that no-name brand of soda. You're like, ugh. I mean, it's all nasty when you think about it, what it does to the body, but like, this ain't the same sort I'm used to drinking, all them kind of no-name brand cakes you get. And it's sugary, but there's so much daggone chemicals on the side of the label. It ain't just flour, sugar, water, egg, milk. No. Monosodium. <laughs> Homo agate. <laughs> Eat this enough. You'll be looking at men. <laughs> from so many different ways and we don't see it well we'll talk about this again in a different way and lots of times I have different titles and I end up coming back on the same old stuff because we don't see it oh yeah right Flashman I don't see it but he's hot in the late 60s and, and early 70s Shasta yeah here it is Riri weirds me out there's a lot of men are able to convince women to take naked photos and make porn with them. Then they create photo albums filled with these women and can't wait for you to see them. Exactly. They have a little co collection. Yeah. But, but now I'll say, I'll say this publicly. I'm chilling out, doing my thing, editing and whatnot. I get this message on WhatsApp. Hey, bro. I see your YouTube videos, man. You're right here in the, in the crowd, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not there now, but you know, nearby, right? So, hey, man, um, check out what I do. Give me a link. You porn. So I said, why you send me that? Well, I, I, I need your help, man, because I know you got the equipment, the lighting and everything. You know, I do my stuff with my phone. The girls wear the mask. Well, so I said, well, listen, tell me something. How, how'd you convince them to, like, have you... Well, as long as their face are covered, they don't mind, you know, because I'm in the media, pretty big. I can't show my face either, but, you know, there's a whole lot of them that want to get down. I need you just to come by and shoot, shoot the stuff. And, no, they, it didn't, that ain't going to work out, right? But I talked to him and I found out, you know, he's like, man, a lot of these women out here. And, see, a lot of times, like, I, I'll tell you from my perspective, which is not the overall perspective or that I know everything, but this, remember, is 2024. So if you were born, right, if you were born in 2006, which to most of us is just the other day, you're of legal age. So these young ladies, even when they're a little older, they came up in this time where the titillation and taking photos and 
there's a lot of competition and low self-esteem out here. So for many young ladies, it's, it's, it's more like, how can I put it? It's like a flex. It's like, see what I can do? It's a prestige thing. For a woman, I'm not saying all women, I'm talking about these type of women. For these type of women who show you they can suck a golf ball through a water hose and put it out there, I got skills. Yeah. Look at TikTok. TikTok in the motherland is women just shaking up, showing this, showing that titillation. But there's a price for that because these guys could have talked to them, they're going to ask for money. TikTok cyber whores. That's the article I wrote the other day. Pretty long, but I got in the detail. But from yesteryear now, I was like, where are you going with that camera? You going to put that camera away? <laughs> you know what I mean? But now, these were, even if you're not born in 2006, say you were born in the year 2000, and you're not 18, but you're 24. When you were born, Coming into your age of five years old, Facebook was born. You, you grew up in this, this thing that you used to be in seen and filters and, and want to prove yourself. And so it's not far-fetched that a certain percentage of our sisters will think of it as, well, oh, well, cameras all over the place. And there's things that sisters did back in the day that, you know, they kept quiet. I remember... I was kind of dating this young lady, and I went to the bathroom. I didn't know she was in there. I seriously didn't. I was in the kitchen, and I came in there, but I thought she was in the bed. So I whooped the door open, and she had that handheld mirror in front of the big wall mirror, her foot up on the chair, spread eagle, trying to see what she looked like. <laughs> I say, <like>, oops. <laughs> Get out of here. What you see? I said, what you were doing was a very good thing. You're doing self-examination. <laughs> but that's like a thing of the past. Now people take their phones and go up under there and look at it, you know, send it to their boyfriends, whatever. Send it to a whole lot of people. A lot of women are aggressive that way these days. But you're right, though, Riri, but there are a lot out here who are with it. And you don't even have to convince them. But they'll tell you different, right? Or they'll tell a person different. In a real life, it's a whole different thing. In the beauty parlor, girl, these girls, the way they act these days, I would never do half the things they would do. These men just run through them and leave them. They be giving them keys to the house. Uh, uh, uh. You'll never catch me doing that over some. Brrrr. Hey, baby. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's come on. You got your key, right? I'll be face down. Something else up when you come through. Right. We're hypocrites. We say one thing and do another. You know, like I said, 95% of these black prophets who are for black people, it's just, it's, it's a scam. People say, well, you a scam too, scurf. I'm not asking you for nothing. The links are there if you want to throw something to a retiree who is on a limited income. That'll help. But I'm not out here. Mm -mm. I'm here talking normal. We hanging out. I'm not, the whole talk is not as a sales pitch, you know, for something else. Mm. I'm just a dude talking and we're having a good time. Ho hopefully we're having a good time. But I am going to wrap it down. My eyes are getting sleepy. It's 1019 over here. And last night, I think it was like about nine o'clock. I was out. And I had so took a nap before and I was up from 330. I don't want to wake up that early again. <laughs> what do you do? Oh, I had a lot of stuff to do, and I'm glad I got it done. But tomorrow, I ain't waking up at no 3.30 in the morning. Or later on, I ain't waking up at no 3.30. I got a few things to do online. And um, I do want to do an early show tomorrow, which I can't say that because if it's early for me. It might be like midnight for you. <laughs> I keep forgetting I'm five hours ahead. So sometimes when I do one of the real early shows, I might have to call it a late night show. You know, because of the time. But nonetheless, I'm just glad that you all take the time to come and just make sure to share it if you like it. Um, just enjoy. 
share certain parts. If you disagree, fine. Let's chop it up in the comment section. And we'll always go to landscape.com for the same um, post. Leave your comments there because YouTube snatches down comments, right? And so you can go right there at the same. Let me see if I can drop it in the room here. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Domino. Here we go. Okay, there it is. Here's the link. So if you must comment, go there. That's the link. That's the one to landscurve.com. I will not remove your link. Even if you cuss me out and say I got morning breath in the afternoon, I will not remove it. <laughs> anyway, y'all, let me just see the comments. Everything is cool. And when you leave the comments on the site, I will respond to them each and every time. I'll write a book in that bad boy. If you take the time to go over there, we good. Yeah, 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 I'll kill them. And yeah, they do that. And I know there ain't no hate speech. And if it was something directed toward them, I'm leaving it up still. Yeah, the banker. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Took the entire family out. They don't want to see none of us doing good. But my thing is, like, you, you, you got that money. Why do you want to, I mean, they're doing all this satanic rituals and all kind of stuff there. Stay your behind at home and, and, and stream it or watch it on television with your family. You got to know you're a target, and the people in the system do not care. And Joe Biden tweeted out uh, some snide remark that could have been taken as him doing something to the Nigerian banker. It, it, it's crazy. Mm -mm. I keep my feet on the ground as much as I can. If I travel, I'm not telling nobody. Until I get there, hey, I'm here. Can't do that. I'm not, I'm not famous or anything like that, but, you know, the stuff I talk, <laughs> you, you never know. <laughs> he should have quit a long time ago. But yeah, it's a whole family makes sure his wife ain't going to continue, his son ain't going to continue, meaning they get that money and continue on with something. And he was a community guy. He gave back to the community everything and wanted to be there. Leave these people alone. Leave these people alone. We, we, we the shiznick. We have more fun amongst each other. What could they add on to our existence? Except chaos, confusion, and trauma. Yeah, I, I thought about that as soon as it happened. I'll kill my, uh, with Kobe. And you get me, but no helicopter. Nope. Chance Rogers, welcome. We're winding it down, but you know Lance be scurving him. See, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> uh, it's always something. Too much to list. Make you scared to go look at what's trending. You know, not literally scared, but, you know, it's always something. Always something. So anyway, y'all, I'm going to wrap this down. I'll be back a little earlier tomorrow or not as late as, as today. And um, if I do go out, I'll bring you all some footage of, of, of walking around Ghana, different parts. I always love to do that. You know what I mean? So I like to share it all, right? Anyway, much love to you all. I have Scurve out, and I will talk to you. Again, leave your comments on the actual site, and I will go deep in on the responses. Thank you all for being here. Make sure to subscribe if you're new, right? Peace out. Much love. Make sure to go to landscurve.com, an online magazine established in 2001, containing written articles, thousands of talk shows and discussions, cutting-edge cartoons, as well as erotic expressions and tasteful adult photography. 
It's definitely not for the faint of heart. Once you get a taste of the world of Lance Curve, trust me, you'll be back for more. LanceGurve.com Bold, raw, and uncut.